to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8. The Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, where we're continuing at verse 4 and 5. So, we've been considering this um, Acts of the Apostles from the time of the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ and the coming of Pentecost and the Holy Spirit in Jerusalem where the disciples were and then how there was this great preaching and thousands of people became Christians out of the Jewish people because it was that they hadn't really in a way stopped being Jews it didn't matter whether you were a Jew or you were not a Jew the important thing was, was to become a Christian which in a way the old Jews the Old Testament were if they were like Abraham and David that that trusted in God for the forgiveness of their sins and they looked for the sacrifice of Christ to come. But of course this became clear when Jesus rose from the dead and uh, then when he ascended into heaven, sent the Holy Spirit and then this message of the death of Jesus Christ, the life, the person of Jesus Christ, God, manifest in the flesh, God coming into the world, the Son of God came into the world to save sinners. This became um, preached widely then and, and, and in a most clear way because they had seen him, they'd seen Jesus, they'd been with Jesus, the disciples, and now he was taken from them. But he promised them the Holy Spirit and as God the Father is God, God the Son is God, so God the Holy Spirit is God. One God, three persons. And so when you have one, in a sense you have them all. You, you have everything from God. So if the Holy Spirit comes and he, he turns us to, to trust in Jesus Christ, then God has come. And there's a fullness, there's a completeness in Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit of God. And that is what happened. And so the people to whom that had happened were unstoppable, you could say. They were given the commission, go and tell everybody in Jerusalem, in the, the north of Jerusalem, Samaria, which is just between Jerusalem and Galilee. So in that area that they've been there been a, a, not a war exactly, but they, well, they had fought against each other at times, but they've become a separate sort of people in Samaria, and they hadn't had anything to do with each other. And Jesus went there in John chapter 4, you may remember, and he gave, he asked a woman for water, and he told her all about herself, and how many husbands she'd had, and all this sort of thing and um, she believed that he was the true living water that if, if um, he, he told her that he was the true living water that if you drank of you would never need any more water as it were you would, you would have everlasting life and a spring of water coming out from you it's maybe uh, it sounds strange to think of like that but in, we think of natural water don't we in a spring have you been in the hills and a spring comes out of water but when Jesus comes into the soul, then there's something from heaven, something from God. So it's, you call it the love of God. We, we call it the, the life of God in the soul. It comes out from your heart then, because it's come from God, if we come to Christ. So he taught her that, and then in that time, there was a great, um, it affected other people. Other people saw him, and they believed when they heard him as well, in John chapter 4. But then later, not quite sure the exact if it's a year or two later, um, Jesus sent his disciples out. Well, when they were passing through Samaria, again it was a place very separate. The people had been it's the Samaritans had, were people sent back from Assyria and Babylon, but to a separate group of them in the north of the country, and they they were muddled up. They had half their own religion and half false religion and they jumbled between worshipping God and worshipping false gods and so they got caught up with magic and all sorts of other things superstitious 
people. But um, when that when Jesus was passing through there a second time, they could tell he was going to Jerusalem and they were annoyed. And John, James and John, uh, the two brothers uh, of, of, the, of, of the disciples, they said, oh, shall we call down fire on them like Elijah did? And so Jesus said, no, you don't know what spirit you're of. He said, the Son of Man has come to save. But of course, they weren't saved, these Samaritans. They, they, some of them had been, perhaps, but they weren't generally. And so there was still this animosity. They even said of Jesus in uh, it's John chapter 8 that he had a devil, he was a Samaritan, he had a devil. So all that he was doing, all the good things he did, they said it's like you've got an evil spirit from the devil in you and you're like a Samaritan. That was the insult that the Jews gave to Jesus when he was here. But now, in Acts chapter 8, the scene unfolds to something very amazing happens. And this is what happens, is that you remember the end of chapter 7, Stephen, they'd thrown stones at him. He preached to the people in Jerusalem and they hated it and they threw stones at him and killed him. And, and the people then were scattered, apart from the apostles, who we're not told why, they stayed in, in um, Jerusalem. Perhaps they, the first possible is that some people uh, they'd have to look after. They, they were protected before, so perhaps the authorities didn't actually attack the apostles, but for some reason they stayed for that time. And then um, that they, they carried Stephen off and buried him. Saul was making havoc of the church, uh, three causing havoc. He was going into people's houses. Can you imagine this happening? Going into people's houses, and if they're Christians, they'd take them out, a bit like Isis, this Saul, and he became the Apostle Paul when he was converted. Complete change. But at this time, he hated Christians because they weren't the old Jewish religion that he thought was right. They weren't following it. They'd got this other God. They'd got this <coughs> Saviour, and uh, it was all very different to him, and he hated it as this does happen in places today. They take Christians out of their houses, take them up and get them in prison and try and get them put to death. It's terrible. So this, then there was a persecution came out. We are looking at before what happened after Stephen was put to death. The Christians got better and the non-Christians got worse, basically, because the Christians, they were very, they had a great love for Stephen, his preaching, his love of God, their love of God in Jesus, and they gave him a, a nice burial, or a, a burial anyway, with great tears for him. But then the, the evildoers, they started persecuting the church. Great persecution arose, chapter, verse 1 of chapter 8, um, of the church in Jerusalem. And so therefore, verse 4, they were scattered abroad. That, that means everywhere, every, all around. The, and they went everywhere preaching the word. And then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many were taken with palsies and that were lame were healed and there was great joy in that city great joy a land that had been in darkness great joy came to it because they heard about Jesus Christ now this is a, a lovely uh, scenario for us so what happens for uh, I've divided it up into some headings that the effect of the persecution uh, is to have a good, the best church as it were, with the worst happening to it, brings out good things. And then how can we make the gospel of Jesus Christ the thing that we talk about and also say something about how um, 
the world isn't as unprepared as we might think it is. Now, then, the evil that came upon the church, the persecution was terrible then. Going to people's houses, throwing them out, getting them put into prison because they worshipped Jesus. Can you imagine such a horrible thing happening to people? You say, well, uh, someone knocks on your door. Hello, is that Daniel there? Are you a Christian? You say, yes. Well, they're right. I'm taking and putting you in prison. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that was what was happening. So they left that town. They left, say, if it were London, and they went to Birmingham. Or they went to, that's equivalent, probably distance, maybe not quite that far even. Maybe they just went as far as Hertfordshire or somewhere. But they, they went to Samaria from Jerusalem to get away from this they couldn't live you can't live in a place where people are going to put you in prison finished some people do some of them will put up with that but what usually happens is that people flee like people are fleeing from different parts of the world today for various reasons we know but <clears throat> um, so the worst but the thing was that the worst that people did to the church as they went on their way they went as it were, everywhere, preaching the word, verse 4. When they went away, they didn't just go away and hide. They didn't just go away and put up a tent somewhere and sit down in it and just eat fish and grass. But they went to different towns. When they moved on, they, they needed help, really. They couldn't just cope on their own. But of course, it, as they went, they went preaching the word. Now. Uh, it's, 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 it's a bit difficult to explain how this was that they why they did this well in some ways it's, it's a natural thing that as they went on their way someone will say what are you doing here where have you come from you're, you're, you've come to Samaria you're a Jew what are you doing here you, well, why have you come here and they could explain that what had happened, Daniel, you right? What had happened to them, they'd been thrown out of their houses, you see, and so they had to find somewhere else to go. But why had they been thrown out? Well, because they were Christians. They had to explain, what, what, what are you doing? Someone might say to you, why are you here? What are you doing here? Why have you gone to church? Well, I believe in Jesus Christ. I've been brought to church, perhaps. But you're here. And so they could explain why they were there. Well, we, well, where have you come from? Well, we've come from Jerusalem. We've been, put, we've been thrown, it's been so bad that we couldn't stay there, we've had to come here. Well, why is it so bad? Well, it's so bad because we're Christians. Well, what's a Christian? Well, it's someone that believes in Jesus Christ. Who's he? Well, he's the promised saviour from the whole of the Old Testament that Abraham and Moses and David were waiting for and because we have, have put our trust in him we've been persecuted Why have they persecuted you for that why is that then well the reason they've persecuted us is because we've come to trust in Jesus Christ because we're sinners so what does that mean well it's because we're not good enough before God we don't obey God we are as it were going to church but we're not paying any attention we're not here to worship God we've got our own thoughts we're, we're there's no way we'd be good enough to go to heaven is there and so they can then explain but there was this man Jesus Christ that came from God and the people that we've come from and we've heard from they were speaking in all our languages and we understood them. They saw him. We hadn't, they, most of these um, people that were sent out hadn't actually seen Jesus, don't forget. So they were sec giving a second-hand account. But they had been so moved by the Holy Spirit that they really became Christians and it was, he was as close to them as he had been to Peter or to John or to any of the... Uh, disciples they had known then that Jesus had died and risen again and he'd given himself as a sacrifice 
for their sins, to save them from their sins, to make them acceptable to God. And they received the confirmation was that the the Holy Spirit had had confirmed to them that, that these things were so. And so they, although they were, as it were, scattered because they were in a sense frightened, they, they couldn't help but tell the truth of why they were moved from Jerusalem to Samaria, which wouldn't be a very ideal place for them to be. They would avoid the place normally. So why are they there? That's why they're there. And so they could give an explanation. Now, um, perhaps it is today that the Christian, well, is, is the church, we're scattered all about the place in many ways, but are we actually preaching the word? Now, this expression here, it isn't only Philip who preaches, although he probably is more of a preacher, he's an evangelist. But they all went everywhere preaching the word. They all had something to say about why they become a Christian. Now, this may be something you need to pray about and think about. Now, why are you a Christian? Have you come to trust in Jesus Christ really or is it just nice to go to church or to have nice friends or are there other reasons but the church obviously today the world doesn't ask us why why are we here what are, who are we what are we doing but they should be really because just as the disciples were spread into Samaria so Christians are scattered all around the world and we do have something very important to say. Now the other reason of course why they would be preaching Jesus Christ is because they knew that, that he'd saved them from hell. He'd saved them from their sins. And so when we come into contact for different people we should be wanting to tell them something about Jesus Christ is the person that you meet day to day are they Christians are they safe with God or if they die you know, sometimes you think where is so or they died I oh, didn't know I didn't know they were ill or maybe they weren't ill maybe they had an accident maybe they just died people just die in the middle of their life without any reason seemingly to us we wouldn't know why natural causes or they, some disease suddenly or all sorts of reasons and they may be old of course that's common getting very old you think one well, must be getting near now but you don't know suddenly someone's gone well, did we ever tell them anything about Jesus when we met them we've got to think about these things it's very important because the people of God this is what we're this is why we're we here what's the point of life now, um, it is today, when you think um, of, the, of the misery that there is in the world, go to Samaria, somewhere like Samaria, where they were all taken up by a wizard. They were following around a magician who was basically taking their money. They thought he was wonderful, but he didn't do anything for them. They were still full of demons and diseases and all in a terrible condition. They were really unhappy and miserable. But then look at the Christian. He's happy. The Christians, I hope you're happy. I know there's a lot of things to be miserable about, but in a <laughs> sense, we're miserable sinners. We should be unhappy about our continuing sinfulness. But basically, the Christian is incredibly happy. It's a very strange thing in this world. When you think there's so many troubles, the threat of nuclear war now and there is it by well, hopefully not but who knows what else is going to happen uh, the amount of disasters that go on in pretty well every almost you could say virtually every country apart from ours is in a really bad way why are we why are we not in a such a state as a lot of these other places it's really really rotten in a lot of countries but even with all the cares and woes the christian has has a contentment from God. See, uh, ask this question to people. Just like the the 
the people they went, where are these Jews, where were these Christians? They all turned up in Samaria. There's a whole bunch of them, and they're all, all scattered around the place. And they're saying that they've got peace with God. They've got everlasting life. Everyone's looking at them. And then someone like Philip starts preaching, and when he preaches, there was miracles happening as well. So you think, well, they had he did have that kind of a, an advantage, if you like. But when a person becomes a real Christian, it doesn't matter about miracles. It, it, it isn't the miracles that, that save anyone. It's coming to a real belief that we're sinners and that Jesus Christ is fully the Saviour. And then we're forgiven by God. The blood of Christ has cleansed us from all our sins. And we have peace with God. And whatever's going on, and I, mean, I get, I know Stuart's got a bit of a shoulder pain. And I get a bit of a, but some pains and I know pain, yeah. so you've got pains I met a man the other day he's got a hernia pain and he's got to wait for it to be treated he said it feels like it's so it feels like someone's attacking you or it's burning painful and I'm sure a lot of you have different uh, troubles but with Jesus Christ we're promised that we, we, we know where we've come from we were made by God we've, we never, but people think they come from today in the world they said, "Well, we've come from Jerusalem. We've come from, we've come from hearing uh, from the apostles that were with Jesus Christ when He walked on the earth, and they've seen Him alive, and they've preached to us, and it's come to us in the, just the same as it was to them that He's the real Savior for us, and uh, uh, we've put up with persecution, and we can't change our beliefs because this Jesus is true, and." And so the, the Christians, look, the, we, we've come from God, we're made by God. The history of the world is that man rebelled against God right at the beginning, right in the days of Adam and Eve. And, and yet then this God, the Son, the Son of God, the second person of the God had came to be a saviour for sinners. And now we know where we're going as well. We, don't, we, know, can't just, we can tell you where we came from, but we know where we're going. It's not... The end of the um, these people that are scattered into Samaria isn't. Oh, we're in Samaria. What are we going to do now? It's we're going to heaven. We're going. And Jesus is coming back. He's going to bring us all in to join with him. Some of us to a resurrection of life, and some to a resurrection of condemnation, damnation, and and uh, misery. So they say, what do we do? Repent. <laughs> that is that we acknowledge we've got to say to God yes we've been doing things our own way I've been my own boss I've lived life as if it all resolved, revolves around me as if I'm the centre of the world and that is the worst about the worst thing you could think it's the most proud vain person thinking that we're something that's what this man which we we'll come across next time I think Simon the sorcerer they he was giving out that he was somewhat some great one. He thought he was a great one. Well, what about that? Mm -hmm. In a way, you can understand it. You've got a life. You've got a body. You've got a mind. You want to do something good with your life. You, so you, in a way, you want to be great. But we want to be great for God. That's what, when we have a repentance, we want to do all the things that we have and do and what we are. We want to do it for God. Because God has made us, that's where we've come from. And so, the Christian has got something to say. It isn't just that we're moaning about one or two things about the world, that we don't agree with one or two points of, of behaviour with them, that they, they, get, they all you know, live together before they're married and we don't agree with it, or we don't agree with the various other issues of today that the world is saying are all very well and good and, but we don't agree with all the other religions it's, it's more to it than that we believe in Jesus Christ that he came to be the saviour so we've got something to preach to all the world all sorts of people all ages all countries whether they're in Jerusalem or whether they're in uh, Samaria and then so that's uh, so how well, how can we then, how can we make the gospel of Jesus Christ the thing that we talk about? Well, I think the first thing we need to do, we need to be close to God ourselves. If we're only at church for an hour or two on a Sunday, and then the rest of the time we're thinking about everything else, we're not really very prepared for talking to other people about 
Jesus Christ. It's not our great priority. It's something that fits in. It's not the main thing. It's, it must be the main thing that whatever we do, we do for the glory of God. Now that doesn't mean we don't get on with our normal jobs and work and school and everything. We've got to do th We've got to plod along through a lot of it. It takes up a lot of time. Uh, sleeping. <laughs> it takes up a lot of time as well. But we, we do need to develop a closeness with God. And I've recommended to you many times, use the Lord's Prayer. Use it slowly and carefully and thoughtfully and apply then the Ten Commandments and the Creed and the words of Jesus and just spend time with God re remembering how good God is and praying to Him and being close to God. And do that by yourselves, do that in your families and do that at church meetings when we're all, when we're all uh, together. And get close, get close to God with the Bible and uh, then so that's some thoughts on how we might do that rather than being what you might think the church today a bit sleep the church is a bit sleepy people are not very bothered they go they come and go and then they're gone but they're not very bothered uh, about everybody else whereas they went preaching the word everywhere they went they talked about jesus christ it it must have if a person has become a Christian, it's, it's, it must have had a huge impact on them. And it's a bit different when you're brought up as children, as, as Christians, you can take it for granted. But, uh, but you, you mustn't really, you must realise that it's a great privilege to know about Jesus Christ. The worst thing that can happen to someone in life is that they're left to their own devices. They go on through life working it all out for themselves but without God it may, they may feel good and they feel they've got some strength but they haven't they haven't got anything and they're in a very dangerous and miserable condition in such a state but then some encouragement is that the world isn't as unprepared <coughs> to believe in Jesus as we may think now not everybody of course there are people that are extremely hostile as we could say, the, the Apostle Paul was. He was the most high. He really, he didn't just want to not take any notice. He went around getting people out of their houses and getting them put in prison for being Christians. You can't get much more hatred towards it than that. But he was converted. Chapter 9. We'll get on to, uh, hopefully, in a few weeks' time. But the impression that we, we come across here is that when he preached about Jesus Christ, people heard they with one accord they gave heed unto the things which philip spake hearing and seeing the miracles which he did and unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed and there was great joy in that city now i ask you the question well have you uh, what, what, first things first um as we said at the beginning perhaps the world is in a mess it's in such a mess unclean spirits well there's plenty of them around whether they're actual demons or whatever it is that's taken up people's lives far from God as far as being lame or with paralysed people are not paralysed so much in their bodies although there is some of that but people are paralysed in their spirit, in their mind. They're, they're shut off from God. They, they, they should be close to... Naturally, you think, God has made man for himself, man, mankind for himself. God, that's the very way God has made them, and yet they're lacking that utterly. And it, whether, it, whether they're atheists or whether they follow some other religion, that's, they haven't come truly to God because they haven't come with a forgiveness of sins that is in Jesus Christ alone. And so they're, they're in a terrible state. And yet the answer is in Jesus Christ. It's fallen completely in him. If you've got Jesus Christ, as it says in Colossians chapter 2, verse 10, you're complete in him. Complete in Jesus Christ. This is 
the amazing thing. And so when they preached to them, uh, that they these people who were in a, a miserable state, they heard and believed. Now, that is the work of the Holy Spirit. They hadn't heard about the Holy Spirit exactly at this point, but it is the work of the Holy Spirit. And so, I, I, I know in some ways we feel like we live in discouraging days. There's not much going on. Yeah. But some of us, in our lives, we know full well that we have turned from darkness, life without God, we've turned to God. And when we think about it, how did it happen? Was it something we did? No. It was the power of God. God came to us. He, uh, the Holy Spirit came and convinced us of Jesus Christ. And we couldn't help but look to Jesus Christ. It's, a, it's the greatest miracle of all. And so <clears throat> the world is, as when Jesus sent the disciples out, and they didn't want to, the, most people didn't particularly want to know, Jesus said to them, the fields are ripe unto harvest. Pray for workers to go out into the harvest field. And that's what they then became and did. And so don't be... Uh, discouraged because the world looks miserable and and discontented don't think that it's not absolutely right that the world the people of the world people you know would rejoice in true salvation in Jesus Christ it is exactly what people need and so uh, they are prepared they are they're in just the right position they're in misery that is exactly the right position to be in to become a Christian. The only uh, difficult, but they're, yet they're, they're, they're cut off until the light comes. Well, the light, how does it come? Faith comes by hearing. They need to hear about Jesus Christ. And so that is the way. So the world isn't as unprepared as we might think it is for the gospel. There are many good stories about people becoming Christians. Now it's true that certain places are harder than others. There are different times and seasons. There are times of revival. You see, there was a time in Samaria when Jesus Christ had been there. About maybe it was three, four years earlier, he'd been there. He spoke to that woman at the well and people had believed on him then. And in the, in the meantime, no they hadn't but now when they come back there's a revival of true religion and this has been the case here there was a knowledge of Jesus Christ in our land and it's still there to some extent although there's much deep ignorance as well and there have been revivals in the past times when people in the world England's been like it is today and then in the 18th <coughs> century one or two people and then more and more were, were converted they, they had a real knowledge of being saved by Jesus Christ, that it was Him. He is our righteousness. We, they, they come and they've given up on themselves in such misery, <coughs> but as they trusted in Jesus Christ, they were born again. They had light and life, and they knew they were on the road to heaven. Are you on the road to heaven? You see, what it says in this chapter is when they heard... <coughs> Verse 8, there was great joy in that city. Great joy. Great joy. Not just joy, but great joy. And when a person has come to Jesus Christ, there's great joy in that person, in that heart, in that soul. Now, we may be thinking about ourselves and think, well, I'm, I'm not, I'm, maybe I need to brush up on this a bit. Well, that's good if we do. That's what preaching's for. It's to remind us of what we are in Jesus Christ if we're already Christians and to remind us the Apostle Paul in prison <coughs> wrote to the Philippians outside they were Christians he was a Christian he was in prison with chains around him tied to a guard he was with, with his other hand he could write a letter I don't know how he did it he could write to them and sent the letter and they got the letter from this man in prison and it says rejoice Rejoice again! I say, really, he had to teach them to rejoice, and we need to be taught sometimes to rejoice. But there is 
and maybe it's because we're not as close to the Lord as we should be that our joy is not uh, is not what it um, what it should be it says in Matthew 24 that because of um, iniquity abounding the love of many shall wax cold so we, we live as Christians in this miserable world that we're trying to preach to it but if we're not careful we can get very caught up with all the terrible things going on and maybe a bit of our own sin mixed in with it and you think oh it's so hard and I'm not very happy and our love for God diminishes well it shouldn't do we've got to fight against that and make sure that we warm our hearts towards uh, the Lord that's what I'm trying to stir you to do uh, today that there is a way to bring great joy to any city and it's through the preaching of Jesus Christ both by preachers by uh, street preaching by church preaching by, by, by listening to preaching of sermons but by individual people being filled themselves with this sureness about Jesus Christ and as it was with Stephen don't worry about what will happen to you now that's a hard thing to say perhaps um, don't worry about what will happen to you if the worst happens Stephen was stoned to death I don't suppose we're expecting that to happen to us but when it was when it did happen that itself stirred up other Christians it inspired them to be faithful and then the gospel was taken from Jerusalem to, to Samaria and then later to other parts so don't be, uh, don't be um, afraid as it were it's very, there's a great temptation to, to make excuses to be quiet about Jesus Christ oh well maybe some other time that time may not come we were aware recently we went, we went on a walk and um, said to my wife I said we might not come here again this might be the last time we might not get to the Peak District again let's go and do it while we're near let's have a little walk down that but we don't know whether we'll be able to do this in a year or two or whenever let's do it now well let's be like that about Jesus Christ there's people we know and I, I, there's some people I must admit I need to have a little word with about the Lord but let's just do it while we can Jesus says that the night's coming when no man can work. Now is the day. Work while it's day. Now is the daytime. Now there are people around here, people you know. Don't go excessively annoying them. Don't go knocking on their door every five minutes saying, I've told you again about Jesus. Come on now. You don't, you, you've got to be a bit wise. But you must have to be able to say something once to someone without them causing, accusing you of harassing them. Uh, you can say some people are saying a lot of things to us about a lot of things and we don't like to hear it but this is important and you know that they'll only know about Jesus if they hear about him it's Britain's best kept secret Jesus Christ it's scandalous isn't it after all these years the big secret Jesus saves sinners did you know oh no I didn't know that I was just going to try and get through life by myself and see if where I ended up at the end no 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 we've been made by God and for God and the way to God is by faith in Jesus Christ who died for sinners and I think that's approximately we, we haven't got the words of all that they said when they went to Samaria and other places but they had a natural testimony I was, I was in darkness, now I'm in light. I was far from God. Now God's been good to me because of Jesus Christ. I hope that's your testimony. You can say that, that God has been good to you with Jesus Christ being your saviour. And that now the least we can do is to say something about him. If you really love him, we will love our neighbours. And to love our neighbours, we can't. Yeah, we can't honest. want to be happy leaving them on the road to hell. When if they would turn to Jesus Christ, they'll be on the road to heaven, and would have a life and a joy in their hearts. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank thee for the wonders of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank thee for this greatest miracle of all, to turn a heart that would be selfish and rebellious and going its own way 
and to turn a heart to loving God, to becoming a friend of God and to becoming, to being safe with God and loved by God and to be kept by God. We thank thee that all these things are so because of Jesus Christ dying for sinners. And Lord, we pray that this may not be uh, such a dark kept secret in our land, but that more people may know that the reason that people are Christians isn't because they don't like this and they don't like that, but it's because they love the Lord Jesus because he died for them. And Lord, may this simple gospel message be spread far and wide and may we have in our hearts the desire to say something to others about Jesus Christ and may thou be pleased Lord to lead us to there will be people who oppose there will be people who mock cause us not to be afraid and cause us Lord to be brought even to the very people who will believe because thou hast called them from before the foundation of the world and yet no one has gone and spoken to them of the wonders of the Lord Jesus who died for them. O oh Lord, we pray thou will bless thy church and may there be revival in our land as there was in Samaria. And Lord, may there even now be in Samaria where there's been much hostility over many years since. May there there too and in the Middle East be again a revival of true faith and peace through our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.